third part of my uh, Rochloff um, disc brake Brompton build. Um, the uh, rear wheel is ready. It's uh, almost a kilo heavier than the original wheel, but I will summarize that I've almost already saved uh, that kilo with my lightweight uh, titanium parts. I'm about to put on this um, Thai parts workshop uh, bottom bracket. Um, it's quite expensive, uh, but uh, it saves uh, 100 grams and it seems to have nicer, larger bearings uh, than the original one. Uh, so this is a very fine part, but, uh, but a very expensive part. Uh, I need it because when I put, put it on and then put the rear wheel on, uh, I will actually be um, in a place where my Brompton is lighter than it was with the original rear uh, wheel. Um, the original bottom bracket on this relatively recent Brompton needs a uh, 20 spline uh, bottom bracket removal tool. It's, uh, it's this tool, while the new bottom bracket uh, has the six, six spline, so it needs this uh, BBT4 tool. This side almost looks like it could have used being faced. So the reason I am uh, facing this shell is uh, poor contact. So this is, the, this is the cup from, it's an aluminum cup actually. May have previously said it's uh, titanium. It's not. It's an anodized aluminum cup. The the spindle is titanium, and when it's screwed in, uh, it makes a very nice contact with the bottom bracket shell right here. But it doesn't make contact back here, and that's very difficult to show on video. There is a decent amount of room there. Maybe even maybe even like half a millimeter. And obviously what happened was um, the brazing heat uh, caused some shrinkage and the metal shrunk in this area. And I have to say uh, the, the brazing compound, the uh, filler metal used in brazing is all the way to the edge here. So let me assemble the rig and I'll face this side first and flip over the bike and face the other side. Out. So this is my tool kit, uh, ice tools that actually came with this wrench. Uh, naturally, I have no interest in this company, but uh, this is a nice kit. Uh, this is the reamer. Uh, it does um, head tubes and bottom brackets and it does um, English where the threads are in opposite directions and it's color coded here so that's for English bottom brackets and this is for Italian bottom brackets which I believe have the same direction of thread on both sides. There's this picture guide um, just choose the picture and uh, assemble the kit. I just found out that due to technical problems I failed to record uh, my bottom bracket facing procedure. And by technical problems, I mean I forgot to uh, push the record button. Um, so I will just uh, show the tool here in its assembled configuration. In, in some ways, it's a, it's a better uh, explanatory video. So, so I assembled the tool. Um, there are two nuts that screw into either side of the bottom bracket shell. So the shell would sit like this, like this on these two nuts. Uh, Brompton has an English bottom bracket, so you need different nuts uh, because there are different direction threads on English bottom brackets. Uh, and this is the cutter currently installed on this side. So it's going to be facing uh, one side of the shell and then this would have to be swapped around. Uh, in the mirror image to um, thread the other side. So the I did manage to record the ring of chips uh, on the cutter right here and how I primed uh, the now bare uh, edges of the bottom bracket shell before uh, screwing in the new bracket. Uh, the primers, of course, to protect uh, from rust forming there. Uh, my plan for the crank is more about the looks than about weight saving. I have this used uh, Sugino 
RD2R uh, crank. I do have this beautiful drilled uh, 52 tooth uh, chain ring. It's a Shimano Dura Ace uh, from years back when things were made out of aluminum and drilled uh, to lighten them. So I'm going to use this T20 Torx wrench, remove the axle plate and rotate rotate it in this direction uh, closer to vertical and then reattach it and when I take it off you'll see how interesting it is that the um, axle plate holds this axle stud and it doesn't run all through all the way through. Uh, there is an excellent video about the inner workings of the Rochlov hub on YouTube and I'm going to put a link um, to it in the description. There it is. So uh, this is the OEM2 axle plate with this axle stub um, and you can get a glimpse it's kind of hard to film which is why I recommend another video but you can get get a glimpse but of the gear mechanism that shifts this inside So I just threaded the uh, shifter cables through this uh, shifter. Pretty simple procedure. Uh, they guide you in the uh, instruction book on uh, how to do it. And because these would be very easy to reverse, they several times repeat what should happen as you put on one cable or another. So this is the external uh, cable box. Um, there is a wheel inside that turns this eight millimeter nut. And this eight millimeter nut in this uh, external, what, what I think Rokhlov calls transfer case, uh, transfers the shifting action inside. And so now I can take the cable box lid off right here and it has two set screws. So I'm able to put uh, this pulley onto the transfer box as I put cables in. Uh, very clever and convenient. Now this is self-evident. This is the side that go this is the side that goes onto the onto the bike. So I'm gonna hold it just like that. And there's only one hole that works when you hold it like that right here and I'm ready to tighten the set screw same thing on the other side so now it's pretty intuitive about how this works the the grooves accept the cables one in counterclockwise direction like this the other one in clockwise direction like this and the whole thing is ready to go into its little box which they call the cable box Now the cable box is ready to go. I am uh, preparing to shorten the chain. This is a brand new chain. This one came with 116 links. I think I'm going to need 100 links. All right, this is very important information. I just figured out by feeling the resistance when I was putting on the chain. Uh, the lock ring of the Rochlov hub rubs on the Brompton, this is a stock Brompton 
uh, chain tensioner, it rubs on it uh, in this area, so near near the idler wheel here that doesn't move. This is the, of course, the moving side, the long side. This is the non-moving side. So just right here, it rubs ever so slightly. So this is the close-up of the problem area with the um, interference between the stock Brompton chain tensioner and the Rochloff hub. Uh, the problem area is right here. Uh, there is a triangular like boss here, some extra plastic, and the rub occurs right here. You can see it's worn and rubbed in this area. Uh, so my plan is to just uh, cut away a little bit of this plastic here. I just put the tensioner back on. I think I could shorten the chain maybe by another link or two. Uh, I've been progressively shortening it, but um, Chain length is good enough in that I'm folding without, without the chain falling off. And now, through the magic of edited video, I'm going to jump forward to a point in the future where my Nov Design magnesium tensioner has arrived. And my uh, magnesium hyper beautiful and hyper expensive uh, chain tensioner is going on for the first time. I did have to remove a little material from the um, plastic one because it was interacting with the sprocket. I don't think that's going to happen here. That's very favorable. I wasn't looking forward to cutting away uh, magnesium, especially because this thing is so beautifully designed. It's so incredibly light. And now back to the past uh, for the first spin. Now it's in first. So that's the lowest gear. Higher. Higher yet. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And it's getting harder to drive it with my finger. 12, 13, and we're in the 14th gear. This is the nut that holds the chain tensioner on a six speed Brompton. And of course the Sturmy Archer hub shifting mechanism is operated through this hole with a chain. And uh, all of that is gone in the roll off uh, installation. Um, but there is a, um, couple of problems with this nut and it's not that it's the wrong color um, this is actually available in titanium and in black uh, the issue is that this nut uh, sticks out far this becomes the longest uh, correction the widest uh, part of the Brompton uh, but additionally uh, it has very little thread engagement on the roll-off hub uh, axle because the roll-off hub axle here on the right side is shorter uh, than the Sturmy Archer hub axle. So I will unscrew it here. I just loosened it with a wrench a second ago. And um, I hope you can see uh, there is very little stick out, uh, very little stick out of the axle uh, past uh, this washer with the 13 millimeter hole. Um, on, on the original Brompton nut, uh, there's a little shoulder uh, that fits inside there and goes through the washer. And essentially the thread engagement uh, is limited to the shoulder, which is um, uh, less than two millimeters, um, which is less than two millimeters uh, deep. So I have two problems. One is very little thread engagement and the risk and the risk of um, the zinc plated nut here breaking off because it sticks out too far. And these of course could uh, work together um, to my disadvantage because it sticks out, it could hit something. And because uh, the thread engagement is low, the nut could break or the threads could uh, strip. So uh, because of this, 
I decided to have one custom part made uh, for this uh, Brompton. Um, I've tried to do everything here. And in fact, all of the modifications here are using Brompton parts or uh, roll off parts or aftermarket parts uh, without modification. You can just buy them off the shelf and install them. Uh, but uh, there's just no such option with this nut. So what I did was uh, I had uh, this nut created. And uh, let me show you the drawing. Uh, it's simply a hex nut. This one is titanium and is meant for Brompton axles as an aftermarket accessory. It's normally eight millimeters thick. And I had a machinist uh, turn a deeper shoulder uh, on a lathe. And it turned out that, about, that half of the nut works well. So instead of being uh, two millimeters uh, on the original nut, uh, this barrel section that goes through the washer is now uh, four millimeters. So I get, uh, I, get more, uh, I get more thread engagement with this nut. And of course, uh, now only, only uh, four millimeters of the nut uh, stick out, um, stick out laterally here uh, past the washer. Um, so as a result, it's no longer the widest part. So it's unlikely to be hit. It's, uh, it's shallower than this Nov Design uh, magnesium uh, tensioner and it's shallower than this uh, acorn nut here I, I have uh, holding the fender stays. So uh, one custom part, of course, uh, any machine shop uh, can do this very quickly and very easily. So. All right, Rothloff Brompton, first ride, first time outside. Here we go. All right. Drifting good. So the lowest gear is very low. This is phase two of testing on a steep hill. I'm running a 52-15 uh, gear ratio with a 15 tooth sprocket in the back. I have since switched to a 13 uh, because you don't need uh, this low of a gear. So this is a 14% grade. Thanks for watching and uh, please join me uh, on the next video where I'll be finishing brakes, uh, mudguards and the details of the folding mechanism.